News of the Times Wicked Wednesdays The Many Crimes of Dr. Marcel Petio Welcome to News of the Times. In today's episode, we are in Paris in France, looking at the extraordinary case of Dr. Marcel Petio, mayor, councilman, thief, resistance freedom fighter during the war. He was also labelled as one of the most diabolical serial murders in French history. Having similar characteristics to America's infamous H. H. Holmes, Petio also had a soundproof room with wall manacles and a peephole from which he could watch his many victims die. Torture, murder, dismemberment and ultimately incineration were the hallmarks of Petio. His estimated kill count is somewhere around 140. Petio himself admitted to 63 murders. We take a look at the extraordinary wickedness and crimes of France's serial killer, Dr. Marcel Petio, in today's episode of Wicked Wednesdays. We hope you enjoy the show. Background. Marcel Petio was born in 1897 in Auxerre. Petio was often referred to by his peers as a highly intelligent and articulate man with deep sympathy for those less fortunate. Always skirting the shadier side of life, he seemed to have a gift for managing to talk his way out of most scrapes he got himself into. Charming and charismatic and gifted with an ability to talk to anyone, during World War II with the French resistance, he is said to be one of the finest interrogators with a talent for extracting information from prisoners in such a way that they wanted to share their information with him. Petio volunteered in World War I. He was wounded and also was gassed. After the war, Petio attended a special accelerated program for war veterans. He completed his medical degree and settled in Villeneuve, Young. In 1926, Petio ran for mayor of the village and won. As mayor of Villeneuve sur Yvonne, Petio had a checkered reputation. It was an open secret that he most likely was stealing from the town treasury. Petio blamed anyone against him as being a political enemy. In 1927, Petio married Georgette Labasli, the 23-year-old daughter of a local wealthy landowner. Their son, Gerhardt, was born the following April. Some months after his marriage, Petio was accused of stealing several cans of oil from the town's railway station. One of the stories that would haunt Petio occurred not far from the town in March 1930. A Henriette de Bob's remains were found in the ashes of the house she lived in. The house had been set fire to, and from her remains it could be seen that she had been beaten to death. Town gossip had it that she had been the mistress of Petio. One witness who had stated he would testify to this effect, visited Dr. Petio to treat his rheumatism. He received an injection for his ailment and died three hours later. Petio stated on the death certificate that his cause of death was an aneurysm. Investigations continued of Petio, mostly from a financial perspective within his role as mayor. Financial inconsistencies were found, which Petiot blamed on his secretary. Petiot resigned. However, some five weeks later, Petiot was elected as a councillor for the district. Again, financial inconsistencies arose with accusations of Petiot accused of stealing electrical power. 
Petiot was again charged and found guilty. He was sentenced to 15 days in jail and a 300 franc fine. Petiot appealed and the charge was reduced and Petiot moved himself and his family to Paris. Paris practice. Petiot sets up his practice in Paris, which was highly successful. He enjoyed an excellent reputation with his patients. However, rumours haunted of his being an abortionist and also providing drugs to addicts. A master of self-promotion, he was reprimanded for false testimonials. More cases of petty theft occurred, such as a purloining a book from a bookstore, as well as constant charges of tax fraud. To counter, Petiot would cite temporary insanity due to his time during the war. The charges would drag on and eventually be dismissed or the charges reduced. Once World War II began, everything changed. The scene. Petiot had two residences, the majestic, ground, three-story house once the residence of a minor princess with a courtyard and stables that was located at 21 Rue Le Cessur. The second residence in which he lived with his family was on the Rue Pontmartin. The horrific unfolding scene would take place in the grand house at Rue Le Seigneur. On March the 6th, 1944, black acrid smoke was seen pouring out of the chimney of an attractive three-story house at 21 Rue Le Seigneur. The house was once the home of a French princess and was elegant with a private stable and courtyard. The acrid, foul-smelling smoke continued without end until on the 11th of March, some five days later, neighbours had had enough and went to complain in person. On the door was a note stating, Gone away for a month, along with an address to which mail was to be forwarded. Neighbours contacted the police. Police arrived on bicycles and spoke with the neighbours. They explained that there had been a string of unusual activity to this seemingly abandoned house, strangers arriving in the dead of the night with the horse cart and trucks which had removed a large pile of suitcases and several heavy sacks were the only some examples of the unusual activity. The police rang Petiot at his home. Petiot's concern was whether they had entered the premises. Upon a negative response from the police, Petiot said to them to wait 15 minutes and he was on his way. The police waited as the terrible, foul, black smoke continued to bellow from the chimney. But with no Petiot, firefighters were called in. Entering through a second-story window, they began to search the building, winding their way to the basement. One of the men came out vomiting. In the basement, they found a coal stove blasting away. There was a human arm still visible dangling from the fire. Next to the stove was a pile of coal mixed with body parts and dismembered bodies. As police made their way upstairs, Petiot arrived on his bicycle. Stunned, the police began to question Petiot. Petiot, charming and believable as always, spoke of how he was the head of a resistance group and that the bodies within were Germans and traitors. Petiot went to state that he had to hurry home where there were over 300 files that had to be destroyed before the enemy found them. Unbelievably, the police let him go. The house. In addition to the body parts found strewn throughout the house, police discovered a large pile of quicklime with human remains peppered within the pile. In the stable, a pit had been dug with quicklime and more body parts within. 
On the staircase from the courtyard to the basement, a canvas sack was found containing the left half of a corpse, headless. It had been gutted with the vital organs missing. In the basements were large sinks that were suspected of having been used to drain blood. There was also a soundproofed octagonal chamber. The chamber had manacles attached to its wall. There was also a peephole in the doorway. A telegram went out. Arrest Petio, dangerous lunatic. Police headed to his home where he and his family lived on the Rue Pont Martin, but it was abandoned. As investigations proceeded, it was discovered that Petio had indeed worked for the resistance and the task of finding him became less urgent. Within his family home, police found chloroform, strychnine, heroin, morphine and other drugs. Forensics and Investigations Inside the first residence, police found mutilated body parts in various states of decay scattered across two floors of the once elegant house. There were also bags filled with body parts, enough for at least ten corpses. Downstairs in the basement were two ovens, from which the rancid black smoke had poured forth. Charred remains of bone could be found scattered in the ashes. An investigation in the House of Horrors, 33 pounds of charred bone, 11 pounds of human hair, 10 whole scalps and 3 dustbins of bone fragments were taken away for analysis. From forensics, it was found that the oldest person within the bones was roughly a 50-year-old man and the youngest was a 25-year-old woman. None of the bodies bore any marks of gunshot or poisoning by toxic metals. From the Liverpool Evening Express, the 13th of March, 1944, Hunt for a Paris Doctor, Slaughterhouse. An intense search is being made by French police for a doctor said to be the owner of the ghastly slaughterhouse found in Paris, says Reuters. This membered remains of at least 25 women were found by the Paris police, who broke into an empty house in the Rue Le Sueur near the Arc de Triomphe. German overseas news agency describing the scene which met the police and firemen in the cellar says heads of women were strewn in an eerie circle, interspersed with limbs terribly hacked about. Red Hot Furnace The furnace of the central heating system was found red hot. Four charred bodies were found. About 30 pairs of women's shoes in cupboards are believed to have belonged to victims. The house was bought two years ago by Dr. Marcel Petio and let to his brother. And he adds the agency, Dr. Petio lives in the Rue Pont Martin, but when the police arrived there, they failed to find him. The German news agency adds, every evening a cyclist arrived at the house. The police believe the cyclist was Petio himself, but are puzzled as to whether the carrier on the cycle contained coal or lime. Sawed his victims. It is known that the murderer first sawed his victims to pieces, dipped them in lime and burnt them. Dr. Petia, who had a practice in the north of Paris, has disappeared with his wife and children. Vichy Radio says Dr. Petia, who vanished soon as the investigations were begun, is being searched for all over the country, a number of women who are known to have come to him for consultation are also missing. Petio's Method It is known that Petio had two accomplices who helped to find members of the public who were looking to escape out of the country. Whether they knew the full extent of what Petio did to his targets is uncertain. During the war, he had gained 
the reputation as a freedom fighter with an uncanny ability to get captured prisoners to talk. Including in his resistance activities was a reputation of a person who would help to smuggle those pursued by the Nazis out of France. It is under this guise that he found his victims to torture, murder and dismember and ultimately incinerate. Initial searches done after the war found no one who had been smuggled out of the country by Petio. It seemed he used this ruse solely to find his victims. The Method Petio advertised within the resistance that he could smuggle people out to South America via Portugal. When a likely terrified person looking to escape Europe approached him, he charged them 25,000 francs for his services. The intended victim was told to pack one suitcase with their most treasured belongings. Then he had the victim write a letter to a family stating that they were all safely on their way to Argentina, but that any future correspondence could be dangerous for them. The victim was then told that in order to travel to Argentina, they required inoculations. They were taken into a room and injected with cyanide. Petio would then leave the room and watch them die through a contrived peephole. Other victims were gassed with Zyklon B, the gas also used in the concentration camps. Once the target was dead, Petio would sometimes go to the house of the victim to pick through the belongings he liked, sometimes taking furniture. Estimates placed his full takings from his murder scene as somewhere around 200 million francs. Getting rid of the bodies. Initially, with his ruse, he dumped the bodies into the river Seine. Occasionally, he would throw sacks of body parts on passing trucks. This technique, however, drew attention in the press. A newspaper report stated that there was a dangerous murderer in Paris as a bag discovered on a truck was found to have two human heads without skin or fingertips, two feet with no toenails, skin of two legs, including heels and three scalps, the first with reddish blonde hair, the second almost black, and the third grey. Many of his victims had been former patients of his. He didn't seem to differentiate between strangers and those he had known for years. Between 1942 and 1943, nine heads, four thighs, and various other body parts were found in the Seine. With Attention now directed by police to a serial killer roaming Paris, Petio looked for an alternative method of disposing bodies, hence the use of a furnace to burn them. From the Daily Mirror, the 24th of March, 1944, the murders in the Rue Lesseur. Detectives have found a secret room in the House of Death in Rue Lesseur, Paris, where Dr. Marcel Petio suspected French Bluebeard is believed to have tortured and slain more than a score of women. There are no windows in the secret room. There is an oven, and Paris police chiefly allege that the bodies of the victims were burned in this oven. In the courtyard of the house of the Rue Lesseur was a lime pit with a block and pulley, which the murderer is believed to have used to dip the remains in lime. Then the bodies were dragged to the oven and burned. Jekyll and Hyde Life It appears that Dr. Petio lived in a Jekyll and Hyde fashion in two houses, one in the Rue Lesseur, where the bodies of the victims have been found, and the other in the Rue Paul Martin. Police chiefs allege that Petiot used a motorcycle and a sidecar to carry the bodies of victims. Last night, Paris police chiefs said that the murderer had accounted for at least 27 people, 
one of them a man. There is still no trace of Dr. Petio, who has disappeared with his wife and his 17-year-old son. It is believed that Dr. Petio had planned another murder for yesterday, that of a woman who had an appointment. I was to have been killed at three o'clock today, said Madame Parisnon, a saleswoman in a store, when she told her experience to a reporter of Paris Soir last night. Madame Parisnon had a pain in her wrist last Saturday and went to consult Dr. Petio. After waiting 15 minutes in the reception room, she was received by a man who, she said, looked like a labourer since he wore no tie and his clothes were splashed with lime. I held out my wrist. A shiver ran down my spine as he touched me. His black eyes bored into me with such impertinence that I thought he was mad. He x-rayed the wrist. You have a dislocated the bone, all right, he said. Your bones are very delicate, my dear, and you need calcium. He then told me that he had other consultation rooms at Rue Lesseur, where a better x-ray apparatus was installed, and gave me another appointment for Monday at 3 p.m. Snatches of the horrors perpetrated by Petio peppered the papers both in France and in England, with the majority of the news covering the ongoing war. The forensics team, with painstaking care, pieced together body parts from amongst the bags and bodies covered in lime, and they found splattered around the house. They arrived at a suspected 54 victims. From the Daily Mirror, the 1st of September, 1944, Bluebeard claimed 54 Paris victims. He wasn't a Nazi myth. We wish he was, says the police. 54 victims of the Paris Bluebeard, Dr. Marcel Petiot, the doctor who drugged his victims and then watched their death agonies, have so far been identified by the police. Forty-five suitcases filled with women's clothing has been found at the doctor's house in the Rue Lesseur, where Dr. Petio lured his victims, drugged and murdered them, and then burned the remains. When German reports told of the hunt for Dr. Petio before the invasion, there was a suspicion that he was a Nazi myth. Yesterday, a police official in the Clichy district said, A myth. I wish he was. Petio was only too real. Heaven knows how many victims there are altogether. Police and neighbours pieced together the story of Dr. Petio. They described him as a big man with a swarthy complexion and hard, ice-blue eyes. The doctor was finally given away by a chimney fire. Every day he burned bodies or parts of bodies. One day a woman noticed the smoke and told the police that there was a smell of burning flesh. The police raced to the house. Dr. Petiot had got away. Petiot is believed to have drugged his victims and then left them to die, while from an adjoining room he watched their death agonies through a periscope. There are grounds for believing that he is now hanging on to the German army in their retreat towards the Rhine. With the war coming close to the end, finding Petio, even with his hideous crimes, was something of an afterthought. He is finally caught, however, bearded and working as a captain of the French Forces of the Interior, the FFI, a French resistance movement. From the Daily Mirror, the 4th of November 1944, the accused of 50 murders. Dr. Marcel Petiot, the Frenchman who says the police is one of the most staggering men in the history of crime. Petiot is accused of more than 50 murders in a death chamber in Paris and was arrested 
whilst working unsuspected as an interrogating officer with the FFI. The photograph shows him under arrest at police headquarters. Last night a captain at the FFI barracks said nobody here suspected Petiot's identity and we won't be convinced he's a murderer till a court proves it. He refuses to wear any uniform and was the best interrogating officer we had. He invented a method to make prisoners talk by kindness. Finally caught and imprisoned, Petio awaits his trial as the war continues on, but with a hoped-for end in sight. With the accumulated evidence, Petio goes to trial. He loudly and energetically proclaims his innocence throughout. When asked about the bodies found at his second residence, he places the blame on his war colleagues as playing a joke on him. From the Birmingham Daily Gazette, the 3rd of January, 1945. Blue Beard's defence. Bodies planted on him as a joke. Dr. Marcel Petiot, the alleged French Bluebeard, charged with murdering a number of women, admitted before the examining judge yesterday that he disposed of bodies by burning them in a furnace at his house in Paris. Hitherto he had denied the presence of bodies in his house, and when the judge asked how did they come to be there, Petiot answered after deep reflection. You know, I'm an old member of the resistance movement. I imagine the bodies were brought to my house while I was detained at Fresnes Prison by the Germans. A practical joke played on me by my pals. And as I didn't want any bother with the police, I had to dispose of the bodies, so I made them disappear. As the trial trundles on, he holds to the proposition that the bodies found in his house having been those of traitors. From the Daily Mirror, the 19th of March, 1946, Doctor accused of 27 killings, insists that it is really 63. Whilst two Tommy gun guards kept watch as he stood in the dock in Paris yesterday, Dr Marcel Petiot, charged with 27 murders, insisted that his victims numbered 63. He quarrelled with the public prosecutor about it, and then, when the figure 33 was mentioned, he said, While on the subject of bodies, those I found in the houses were still quite pinkish, indicating death to have been quite recent. I thought it cheeky on the my part of my comrades to have dumped and buried bodies at my home, he added. Petiot claimed that he was a member of the resistance movement and that the dead people were all traitors executed during the Nazi occupation. A visit to his Petiot's House of Horrors is required and the court, jury, gendarmes and Petiot himself go to his house to visit the scene of the crime. There is some concern that the crowds will surge forth to try to lynch him. From the Daily Mirror, the 23rd of March, 1946, Petiot's face went grey. A van glided to a stop in Paris's Rue Lesieur yesterday while gendarmes held back a crowd yelling, Assassin! Dr Marcel Petiot, said to have committed 63 murders, got out and led the way into number 21 the house of death. Here, on the spot where he is alleged to have murdered and cut up his victims, he acted as a guide to judge and jury. The nervous tension ran so high that one woman, an attaché of the court, wept. At one side there was a weird and wonderful pulley arrangement which the prosecution alleges Petiot used to lower the bodies of his victims into a pit. He stated, 
When I was released from Fresnes prison by the Germans in 1943, I did not come to this house for almost a month because I thought I was being shadowed by the Gestapo. Petio explained. When I finally came here, I noticed a terrible smell which I traced to this pit. Then I discovered the bodies, but I never knew where they came from. The group then went down the cellar to examine the furnace in which police found charred remains of bodies. Petiot by now was labouring under the strain. His face was grey and his breathing jerky, says the British United Press. When the candles which the bailiff was holding aloft flickered, Petiot muttered grimly, the lights of justice are going out. He had to be supported on the arms of the court attaché until his strength was resolved. One of the prosecution witnesses speaks of the blue marks found on the legs of some of the victims. The theory is that it is here that Petio injected them to kill them. Petio loudly objects, stating that no blue marks are left on the body from injection. He offers to inject any of the jurors to prove his point. All of the jurors decline. On the 5th of April, the verdict is given. From the Daily Mirror, the 5th of April, 1946, You will avenge me, Petiot counsel in death court. After standing tense and pale, while sentence of death by the guillotine was passed on him in Paris last night. Dr. Marcel Petiot, 49, mass murderer, suddenly electrified the court by screaming at his counsel, You will avenge me! Then, manacled to his guards, he marched to the cells. Petiot was found guilty of 24 murders committed during the German occupation of Paris. He claimed to the end that he was a patriot, an executioner of Gestapo stool pigeons, and wept bitterly slumped in the dock before the verdict. Petio's defence make an appeal to have his sentence commuted, but it is rejected out of hand. Petio is to be executed by guillotine. Petio is executed on the 25th of May, 1946. From the Liverpool Echo, the 25th of May, 1946, he walked to the guillotine, Petiot's final gesture. Dr. Marcel Petiot, convicted of the murder of 27 men, women and children in the death chamber of his house in the Rue Lesieux in Paris, was beheaded at dawn today. The exact number of Petiot's victims will probably never be known. Petiot admitted that he had killed 63 people, but he claimed that they were all Germans or Gestapo informers. Petiot wore a blue shirt which had been specially cut round the neck and his own civilian trousers. A last cigarette. Petio enjoyed the last cigarette. Then, rubbing his hands easily, he said, Thank you, gentlemen. Now I am at your service. Maitre Floriette said, The public prosecutor returned his bow and led the way down a long corridor to the courtyard and the guillotine. The prison chaplain was in the little party, and Petio had refused to confess and take mass in his cell. But before the draped doors opened onto the courtyard, the chaplain stepped forward, embraced Petiot, and pronounced the benediction. Petiot remained calm all the time and smiled his thanks. The door was opened, and there was the guillotine two or three yards away, with the executioner and his assistant waiting. No hesitation. Petiot never hesitated. He seemed to know exactly where he had to go, and it was all over in a few seconds. A few minutes after the execution, Petiot's body was placed in a plain white wooden coffin 
for burial in the consecrated ground where Laval was buried before his body was claimed by his family for reinternment. Elaborate precautions were taken for guarding the prison during Petiot's execution. A solid line of gendarmes mounted guard to all the approaches at least 100 yards from the prison gates. That concludes this episode of Wicked Wednesdays, the many crimes of Dr. Marcel Petiot. We very much hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy this show, we would be grateful if you could like or subscribe to our channel. We upload five days a week. Mondays are murderous as we delve into the dark side of Regency and Victorian crime. Wednesdays are wicked, where we pull together stories with a similar theme, such as Doctors of Death. Fridays are frightful, where we look at crimes in a location such as stories from the stage to murder and scandal in the aristocracy. Saturdays is Serial Killer Saturdays, where we investigate serial killer stories from the past. On the last Sunday of the month, we offer a two-hour compilation of stories based around a theme. Thank you again for watching and listening. This has been News of the Times, and I am Robin Coles. <laughs>